Li Shangjing, Wind and Rain. Saddened by the words of precious sword, I've wandered, squandering the years. Yellow leaves still suffer wind and rain, as music lures me to the green pavilions. Today's encounters, merely fleeting things, unlike the warmth of old companionships. To ease my heart, I reach for Xing Feng wine. A thousand gallons wouldn't melt this sorrow. So we continue with poems by Li Shangjing, and this poem titled Wind and Rain is, we could say the topic of this poem is a melancholy lament at uh, the unsatisfactoriness of the present as opposed to the past. Now this is a topic that is pretty dear to Chinese poetry. The idealization of a golden age in the past is very common to a lot of the classical Chinese poetry, and not only Chinese, most European poetry, at least until the 18th century, you, ask, you know, and, and even later, uh, idealized the past. Uh, I imagine in this in this text, the, the, the idealized past whose passage is lamented and uh, whose, uh, whose value is contrasted with a dreary present seems to be the strictly personal past of the poetic persona. Of course, it would be easy to read into it uh, a more long-term criticism uh, of the times in which the poet is living. The times are out of joint. Uh, remember, Chinese poetry is always very oblique. Li Shangjing is famous for being a dark, allegorical and oblique poet. And we've already mentioned when we talked about the previous poem of his uh, that uh, he was rather unsuccessful in office because of party uh, squabbling and infighting. And, uh, you know, he, he really felt, he really lived in the shoes of a, the very common persona for a scholar official of the unrecognized worthy man. So here he might be lamenting, he is clearly and explicitly lamenting that he's living in a present that does not live up to his past and uh, perhaps to the expectations he had in his past. And, uh, you know, it's personal, but I, as I said, it's very easy to think that one could read this also as a criticism of his times. Uh, not too dark, it's not too full, this poem of uh, literary references. There is one in the first line that we will comment in a minute that is a bit dark and uh, it's not explained in this anthology, so I'll make my own guess at it. So as usual, let's take a look. So the main topic, as I said, is uh, the, the, the decline of the present or the, the lesser authenticity and value of the present condition of the poetic persona as opposed to the past condition and relations of the poetic persona. Uh, in, inscribed within this topic as a, may, as a minor subtopic, you could see the, the sadness, the melancholy that is always a staple fare of Chinese scholar officials, the passage of time, autumn, uh, the melancholy uh, sadness of the passage of time. Okay, then let's uh, start as usual. First couplet. Saddened by the words of precious sword, I've wondered, squandering the years. So the first poem very clearly states the persona of the poet as a wanderer. Remember, this, um, this is a, a figure that appears a lot in, in almost all of the poems of the scholar officials. They had to serve in different places. They had to wander around the empire. They were uprooted from their family roots and from the networks of friends and fellow scholar officials they might have enjoyed some time with in the capital when they were preparing the examinations or just after passing them and serving in, in central government positions. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, the Chinese scholar official sees himself most of the time as a wanderer, an uprooted person going from place to place. And this is a very negative thing to be. It's sad, it's melancholy. So the poet very clearly states us, I've been a wanderer, I've squandered, I've wasted my time wandering from here to there. Presumably serving in office, although, you know, you know one would be able to squander one's time doing good-for-nothing things. And the first line is a bit more ambiguous. It's saddened by the words of precious sword. What is precious sword? Well, precious sword or jeweled sword, uh, this could be a reference to a poem, but uh, um, I think the original doesn't mention the word poem. It doesn't say the precious sword poem. It says the precious word, sword scripture, text. Uh, there, are no there are no clarification notes in, in, in this volume that I have, but I would make a guess that the precious sword 
that is being referred to. And the episode is an episode from the Zhuo Chuan, the Zhuo tradition, which is the episode of uh, Ji Cha of Wu. So Ji Cha of, uh, of, of, of Wu, he was a prince, a member of the, um, of the royal line of his state. Uh, and uh, he appears in the, in the commentary of the Springs and Autumns as, as, uh, as an, uh, an example, a perfect example of the Confucian moral person. His father uh, wanted him to inherit the throne, even though he wasn't the first in line. And after his father died, he renounced. He rejected being made a king, so not an ambitious person. And he traveled through the central kingdoms. Uh, in one of his travels, he passed through the state of Shu. And uh, even though the, the, the lord of Shu didn't ask for the sword he was carrying, he was carrying a very precious sword. The states of Wu and Yue were famous for the quality of their swordsmanship. Now, even though the Lord of Shu didn't ask for the sword, um, Jisha guessed that uh, the Lord of Shu wanted the sword and decided that he was going to give it to him when he returned from the mission he was, uh, he was serving in. The problem is when Jisha returned to the state of Shu on his way back home, he discovered that the Lord of Shu had died. So he hung the sword on a tree as a farewell gift, as a funerary posthumous gift uh, for the ghost of the Lord of Shu. So I am not sure about it. I know this is ju just my guess, but I would think the anecdote here is this one. Why, why do I think it's that one? Because it fits the tone of the poem. It fits the tone of wanting to give gifts to friends who are no longer around. And, and you know, the poem here, as I said before, is basically about lamenting the present of the poet and his separation from other people, from good friends from the past. So I think this idea of, of sadness in the present and being far from friends connects well with, the, with this image and this episode from the Zhuozhuang. So anyway, the first couplet. The poet feels sad. The poet remembers that story of, of friends or of close people not being able to meet again for the second time. And, uh, you know, he has this, this feeling that he is like a wanderer or he is a wanderer that has wasted his time going from here to there. And probably not just serving in office, probably in some frivolous uh, activities, as the second couplet seems to imply. Yellow leaves still suffer wind and rain, as music lures me to the green pavilions. So we have the poet as a wanderer, and, uh, which, which already creates that background tone of sadness. Uh, the second couplet locates us in autumn. So, yellow leaves still suffer wind and rain. That is, the old leaves, the yellow leaves, when the trees are in autumn, still suffer wind and rain. It's still, they still have to suffer from the hardships of, of the climate. Their old age gives little consolation. We might think that Li Shangjing in his present is saying, you know, I, I've wandered a lot, I'm old, and I still suffer adversities and unhappinesses. And yellow leaves still suffer wind and rain, so it's autumn probably, we might imagine that there are actual yellow leaves being beaten upon by the wind and the rain, as the music lures me to the green pavilions. Now, the green pavilions is a euphemistic expression for the pleasure quarters, that is, the, the taverns, uh, the brothels of, uh, of, of the white houses and brothels of the capital, or of the cities. So, this image, you know, uh, the poet going to enjoy the music, I think in the original we have uh, pipes and uh, drums. Uh, the poet is going to enjoy the frivolous pleasures of drinking and, um, and uh, sexual dalliances. Uh, but time is relentless and passing. Yeah? And, uh, uh, you know, he is getting old. It's autumn. It's probably the autumn of his life as well. He goes to enjoy these frivolous pleasures, but uh, they won't make him any younger. He's not getting any younger. And the, the, the superficiality and the unsatisfactoriness of this Epicurean type of lifestyle is clearly hammered in in the third couplet, which contrasts the present with the past. Today's encounters, merely fleeting things, unlike the warmth of old companionships. So all these pleasures that I can buy of, of wine shop or tavern mates and uh, prostitutes, etc., these are but a pale shadow of the noble friendships of the good people I knew in the past and which I no longer have contact with, whether it is because they're dead or they're far away or whatever, 
we do not know. But the present is a, a frivolous and empty shell, a husk of a better past, a happier past that is remembered. To ease my heart, I reach for Xing Fen wine. A thousand gallons wouldn't melt this sorrow. So the poem ends in a hyperbolic image. You know, it reminds me a lot of some of Li Bai's poems. So the little Li, Li Shangjing, is echoing the big Li in this poem. So alcohol as a, a way out of preoccupations, of worries, of uh, lamenting for the past and for one's friends is offered as an alternative, but it's almost immediately repudiated by the hyperbolic image that you would need more wine than can be imagined to really drown the sorrows of Li Shangjing. A thousand gallons wouldn't melt this sorrow, so deep is the sorrow felt. So, uh, as I said, uh, this is a poem that, you know, feels, you know, very, very much in Li Bai's uh, line. A lamentation at decline in the present, which is left unspecified, but which does seem to be personal on, on the face of it. Yeah, the loss of friends, the loss of contacts. Pretty easy to understand, pretty straightforward. So, yeah, quite a nice poem.